where I'm standing now was once in the middle of a tidal lagoon and it was full of activity before the 1931 earthquake. Sailing was a major pastime in early Napier and this place used to be full of boats, either racing out in the middle where at its deepest it was five metres or just nipping across the lagoon to places like Priority for picnics as there were many, many little bays that provided wonderful places to eat and while away in afternoon. There were also shallower parts and mud flats. When the earthquake struck, it lifted all this area about two metres. Boats were left high and dry and so were many fish. And the stench from the fish as they rotted was most unpleasant as it rotted over Napier. But the sailors loss was the airmen's gain and as the sailors hauled their boats away, men were taken to the air in little planes and going, this would be a good place for an airport. And so the Beacons Aerodrome was born. It was the quake that actually established the airport out at Napier because there was stiff competition with Hastings with their Bridge Par Aerodrome. But over 2,800 hectares was immediately uplifted and another 1,100 hectares was able to be reclaimed, all of which was inherited by the Napier Harbour Board, which now became a major landowner. It wasn't just the inner harbour that rose in height. To the naked eye, the CBD looked about 10 feet higher and the beach along Marine Parade was widened as the sea seemed to retreat. Not only was this handy at the time, given how many people were camping there, but in time, the wider beachfront as well as the earthquake rubble that was dumped there to help with the reclamation enabled many of the amenities the people of Napier have enjoyed ever since. It wasn't just land above water that rose, so did the seabed. Ships at anchor in the roadstead were forced to move further out into the bay and photographs taken from one of them, the Northumberland, at the time of the quake and again mid-afternoon show how far out they had to go to find deeper water. The uplift also gave Napier room to grow residentially. Mariwa was the first suburb to occupy previously swampy land and over time Puramai, Onikawa and Tamatea would follow. Thank you for watching our story from the Library Vaults today. To learn more about Hawke's Bay history, come into Napier Libraries or visit our website at www.napierlibrary.co.nz. Stay tuned for our next dive into the Library Vaults.